I'm Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We are not only the Black Buddhist Voice in America, we are the Black Buddhist Voice in the world. Whatever circumstances that you are faced with, the Buddhist faith can help you. Black people need the Buddhist faith more than any other people in America. Not only do we need a black Buddhist voice, we need black Buddhist teachers who can speak about Buddhism in our own language, culture, and history. My lecture today is how Buddhism awakened help of the gods. You see, the most important thing that the Buddhist religion teach is that you should seek the help of the gods. Now, in the ghost show, it's called How the Gods Protect the Place of Practice. You see, once you begin to practice Buddhism, you awaken the gods within and the gods without. You see, the ghost show reads, if we consider this story and apply it to the present, we see that although a person may be guilty of certain faults, if that person has faith in the three treasures of Buddhism, he may escape major difficulties. And I have known for some time now what was indicated to you in the divine instructions you've written me about. On reflection, I think that surely they are a sign that difficulties can be averted and that good fortune is on the way." Unquote. You see, there's another ghost show called The Sword of Good and Evil and it reads, quote, You must pray to the heavenly gods with all your heart. Unquote. See, let me tell you something about many of these Japanese and Asians, Buddhists, they tell black people to ignore God and they do not make God inclusive of their Buddhist faith. You see, this is not the practice of the proud black Buddhist world association. See, we include the teachings of God in our practice. See, let me lay the facts on you. As a black man who started practicing Buddhism in 1970, I am a five-time world karate kickboxing champion who fought and traveled the world. And I can tell you firsthand how the Buddhist gods protected me. In fact, in 1984, my mother died and I had a fight in Miami, Florida, where I defended my professional karate association world heavyweight title. I got what I thought was a bad deal and a poor decision. Now, by me getting what I thought was a poor decision, I left the PKA and I went out and won three more world titles. Now, what I want you to see right now I want you to see a quick video clip of me and what I accomplished after I left the Professional Karate Association. Let's look at this video clip and we're going to come back and finish our lecture. Let's watch this video real quick and we'll come back and finish our lecture. Anthony F. Elmore won the PKA title in Memphis in 1982 when he defeated Demetrius Oaktree Edwards. Elmore brought class, style, and excitement to professional karate. Chosen by Ebony Magazine as one of the nation's most eligible bachelors, he called the Emperor Muhammad Ali of karate. Elmore successfully defended his title six times for the PKA. After a bout in Miami, Florida in October 1983, Elmore began to have concerns about his relationship with the Professional Karate Association 
Although Elmore defeated Palmore with a stunning TKO in the tenth round, the judges had Palmore ahead. Elmore wondered how could such judging occur in light of the fact that Palmore continued to run and lie on the canvas throughout the bout without being penalized by the referee. In a rematch with Palmore in Miami in 1985, Elmore clearly outclassed the challenger, throwing great right hands in bout two. Palmore antics were even more bizarre than the first bout. Well, instead of diving to the canvas, Palmore even dived out of the ring. In the bout, Elmore showed his superior kicking ability. In fact, Elmore broke and set a new record for the most kicks ever thrown in a karate bout. An amazing 189. Elmore raising his hands at the end of the bout knew he had won, but with three, four other judges and a hostile sanctioning organization against them, a fair decision would not go Elmore's way. Elmore! Towards the fight, 119, 118, Palmore. Judge McCoy scores the fight, 118, 117, for the new world. Palmore. Elmore is looking down here like he doesn't believe it. He does not believe that the decision has gone this way. I'm not real sure Tony Palmore believes that he's a champion. Obviously, he's elated. I wonder if he thought he could ever get the PKA title. So, the obstacles, some of the blocks for all the, uh, you know, seven stones for guys like myself. It means that uh, I'm going to be a greater champion when I come back. I'll come back and take it. I felt that it was home clicking the joke. We have no complaints. I am a quality champion. I'd like to congratulate Tony Palmore. I have nothing to lay my head down for. I'm a proud man, and I will get it back. Proud man he is. Elmore said it is men who make titles. Titles don't make men. Six weeks after what Elmore calls the theft in Miami, Elmore changed sanctioning organizations and took on and defeated Super Ray Williams of Tulsa, Oklahoma to become the Karate International Council of Kickboxing World Super Heavyweight Champ. This champion did not stop at winning the Kick World Super Heavyweight title. Elmore's philosophy is if they steal one title, go in two. Angered at the theft in Miami, Elmore took on TKA U.S. Super Heavyweight Champion Gentleman Bill Morris for the second world title. And tonight, Elmore defends his kick heavyweight title. This is what happened. Had I stayed with the Professional Karate Association and been their champion, they soon thereafter given me a bad decision, the PKA or the Professional Karate Association folded. Now, I, in the meantime, just two months after getting a bad decision, I went out and I won two more world titles. But not only did I win two more world titles, I was able to take that video footage. In 1987, making myself the first independent filmmaker in the Mid-South. That means Mississippi, Tennessee, and Arkansas. You see, Spike Lee had did a movie in 1986 called She's Gotta Have It, and Robert Townsend came out in 87 with a movie called Hollywood Shuffle, and me, in 1988, I had a movie. But more importantly, that my 1988 movie, in 1990, it took me to Nairobi, Kenya. I not only met Kenyan President Daniel A. Rapp Moore, I have worked over 30 years as a non-commissioned African ambassador whose role is to bring our African and African American families together. What I want black people to understand is that we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association do not practice the Asian style cultural Buddhism 
whereas we practice our Buddhist faith as an Asian on a mountain meditating. We awaken the gods within and we awaken the gods without. We credit our success in life not from achieving an oriental style state of enlightenment. We credit our success to developing a Buddhist faith that awakens and secure the help of the Buddhist gods. Were I previous my movie in Nairobi, Kenya, had I stuck with the PKA, I never would have had a movie, I never would have been a five-time world champion, and I never would have probably met the first wife who was from Kenya. I have a beautiful old son that's now going to college this year, and right now, we're, even though we're no longer married, my old son named Siddhartha Gautama Elmore. But had I stuck with the PKA, None of these things would have happened. You chat, no, your heart will get cold. You wake up your Buddha nature and find your greatness. Anyway, I think you got it. Through the Buddhist faith and practice, we can change our lives. Anyway, I am Anthony Al Elmore, President found of the proud black Buddhist World Association. Thank you very much.